Hi, this is Joey O'Neill from Sound Systems Incorporated in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And the purpose of this video is to give the members at Conway Free Will Baptist Church a quick overview of how to operate the worship service, worship software that we've installed <clears throat> in a laptop computer. Uh, we've done a large installation with uh, USB cameras and other recordings. We also have three video monitors in the sanctuary. In this particular image, you should be able to see the video monitor hanging up in the corner. We're only going to show one side. Because what I'm trying to do is just to give a general overview of how things will operate as far as the computer goes. It's very important that we, we have to remember two different things. The computer itself has to operate on what they call extended screens, meaning that I've got a working screen here for my laptop, but then the image that the congregation is looking at would be a nice, pretty finish, so they're not looking at all the details I'm trying to do when I'm typing or working if I have to move some things around. So, therefore, we have to do a couple things. We're going to right-click. I'm not sure which windows this is. I guess it's 10. But I'm going to right-click on the display, and I'm going to go to the display settings. And when that comes up, what I want to do is make sure that this is set up as my primary screen and that is my extended screen. So I'm um, giving it just a second here. Taking longer than usual, of course. Then my screen, it may not show on my video, but I'm showing screen one and two. And if I want to make sure that my computer is set up properly, I can click identify and I'll get number one at this location. And you can see a number two. Let me do it again. There's a number two at that video monitor, meaning that that monitor would be the same thing as something sitting beside this main monitor. Um, if you're going to do other things such as play a DVD or something, you'd have to turn that off and duplicate it so whatever you're looking at here goes there. But as for, for this situation, we're setting it up as far as what they call extended screens. Now, I'm going to get out of that, and I'm going to come over here, and we've installed ProPresenter 6, a nice little program. I by no means know everything about it, but I know how to get things up and running. <clears throat> and we're going to wait for that program to open. And that program also needs to be told that we're using dual monitors. So the computer itself has to be set up with extended screen. And then the pro presenter, we have to tell it that we have to, that we're going to set up for extended screen. Because what happens when the program opens up, we're going to have all of this stuff we're going to be dealing with and all these things that we'd like to do. But we don't want them to see all that uh, from up. So I'm not, I'm going to skip this for now. We're not going to do any, anything at this point. So I've got a new, basically I have a new presentation here. Um, in the beginning, I can do quite a few things. I'm going to come over here where it says video image, and I'm going to click on that. And what appears down below are quite a few photographs that I've just downloaded from the internet, patriotic, religious-based photographs. And let's just say I'd like to start showing some items up there. Well, the first thing I want to do, and it should stay this way, but I want to come over here to ProPresenter 6 and go down to where it says Preferences. And when I click on Preferences, it should take me to a screen where my display is at. And I want to make sure that these guys are set up to where I have SD1, which turns purple, and SD2 is my output. Now, that should stay that way, but in case it gets out of whack, go to ProPresenter 6, go down to Preferences, and set up your displays to do that. I'm trying to make the easy way for the, for the church to set up. Now, no, I don't need any help. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. So now I want to come over here and start adding some tiles because I'm going to take my uh, hymn book here in a few minutes and type a few verses in. Um, so I'd like to add some stuff for people to look at. I'm going to come right down here to a little plus sign right over to the side, and when I click that, then I'll start adding... Oops, sorry, hit the wrong thing. And I'm going to make... Oh, sorry. All right, I previously did that. If I click this little plus sign down here, it starts adding tiles so that I could go through and type hymns, words, or anything like that in there. Now, you still see nothing on the main screen other than the background to my desktop. What I could do is let's say that I wanted to click on this tile here that says welcome to Conway Free Will Baptist Church 
still nothing happens up there. I have to go over here to this little second from the end, there's volume, and right here it says output. And when I click output, then what happens is what's showing on my screen goes to the, goes to the images for the congregation to look at. So therefore, right now I have these words with a very colorful background and what I may want to do is take that background away because I can't see the words for the background. So I can come over to this little piece right here that says BKGS, which means backgrounds, and I can get rid of the background, and now my words just fade up to the screen. You should be able to see, Welcome to Conway Free Will Baptist Church. And at that point, I could go through and I could click on photographs. There's a flag, there's an eagle, and so on and so on. So therefore, if I were the church was going to sing uh, 333, I'll fly away. So what I'm going to do is come over here to click on the tile. I'm going to right click on it. And it's going to come right down here to the second option. And it says edit slide. And when that happens, I can double click what's in here. And I'm going to come in here and get rid of that. And I'm going to put... Uh, fly away and I know it's very small so what I'm going to do is come over here to this little toolbox I'm going to click on that and it will let me change the fonts I'm sorry I get to the right one there we are the second one right beside the little tool switch and I like uh, Georgia font just for Kicks. So I'm going to come down here to Georgia. All right, first of all, I'm going to do is I want to highlight it. And I'm going to go to Georgia. I only like Georgia for fonts. I don't like them in football. I'm going to make it bold. And then I'm going to come down here to my size, and I'm going to start just increasing it to I get the size I would like to have. So I'll fly away is relatively large, of course. Now, I may have a verse or quite a few things I want to do. And once I do that, I, a neat little feature on this is I can come down a little bit further and it says apply to all. So that means I'd have a size 99 font in bold in Georgia, with Georgia. Once I type everything in, I could highlight them, select it all at one time, and apply that to all tiles. And now, when I'm finished, I can just come over here to the X and X this out. If you'll notice, I have a dove in the background, so I could either get rid of that dove if I wanted to, goes away, or in this case, I'm gonna throw the dove back up there, and then I'm gonna come over here and click on, I'll fly away. <laughs> How poetic is that? That's an amazing, I'm incredible. So I'll fly away with a dove there. I didn't mean for that to happen, it's just all part of show business. Now I'm gonna click on, welcome to Conway Free Will Baptist Church, and if I'd like, I can get rid of the background and then I just have Conway Free Will Baptist Church uh, nice and big on the images up there. And I can come back here and we're going to sing I'll Fly Away. And then the next aisle could be the first verse, second verse, and so on. That's the basic rundown of this program. Uh, I've, I do have Bibles stored in here, multiple Bibles. So if I wanted to click on it, go. I, I have the King James Version uh, in here. So if I wanted to put in... Uh, Genesis, and, oh, I'm sorry, hit search and put in Genesis. Then books will come up. Uh, I can put uh, number one in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I could take that, copy it down, put it into a tile, and then I could have my scripture as pastor would go from his presentation. I could follow along with him. So that's, uh, I'm going to close this for now. And let's say that I have a photograph down here that I've uploaded, and I like this one, for example. I can double-click on this, and I'm going to take it and drag it up to that tile. And now, when I click on this, what happens? I have praying hands on a nice video image back there in the back. Now, with that being my background, I can click on that tile, and it says, I'll fly away on it. There again. So that's the... Uh, that's pretty the basic way of making everything work now i get to a point where i get lost or a pastor goes off into a story or something not related what i what would be good is to have a default type picture you could just pull up 
in case uh, something happens. And I could come over here to this section right over here that says output. And if I click that output, I go back to my desktop. That's a very quick rundown on how to start the program. It's so open-ended and it's only based on your imagination. I have, haven't even scratched the surface. But what I'm going to do while I'm here, uh, type a couple hymns for the church and leave them on so that they can move around and click on tiles as they need to. If there's any questions for me, the whole purpose of this video was just to help the people in the video booth at Conway, so I found it easier to make a little video, then I can email it to them. I may put it on YouTube just so they have quick access to it. I'm not putting it on YouTube uh, to be a, you know, a technical instruction. All the purpose of this is just how to get the church started and how to help people out who don't do this for a living, who, who work during the week and just volunteer their time for the church, who are the true ministry sometimes of, of the church. If there are any questions for me, I'm Joey O'Neill at Sound Systems Incorporated, and I can be reached at 843-602-5883, and that is a cell phone number. Thank you.